and I'm here today to moderate a discussion about Bitcoin that will span from what makes it special to the um, its relationship with energy, it the community ethos, and the future of Bitcoin. I'm joined by three special guests. The first is Kathy Wood, founder, CEO, and CIO of ARK Invest. Next is Elon Musk, techno king of Tesla and chief engineer of SpaceX. <laughs> and finally, uh, Jack Dorsey, CEO of Square and CEO of Twitter. So we have a lot to talk about today. So let's get to the talk and get right to it. Um, I'm gonna start off by asking each of you uh, a question, uh, which is what um, what's shaped and influenced your views on Bitcoin? And let's start with Kathy. Okay, Steve, thank you. Uh, well, the first thing was uh, our focus on disruptive innovation. Uh, so starting in 2011, Brett Winton, our director of research, who I know will be on the program later, um, he started talking about this thing called crypto, well, Bitcoin at the time. And it was a curiosity as we were doing our brainstorms in, in research. But as we learned more about this open source ecosystem, uh, that might fulfill the role of the, the payment system that the internet neglected to build into the system, not expecting commerce. We thought, hmm, this might be something. And then I became even more interested when I realized uh, that, there, that, that my economics would come into play as well here. And uh, Art Laffer, um, my mentor uh, from, from USC, uh, and a monetary scholar, uh, in 2014, I asked him if he would collaborate on a paper on on Bitcoin. Uh, and he he was a bit of a naysayer at first, and uh, but agreed to read the paper. He read the paper, tore it up, uh, and 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 from an economics point of view, really wanted to understand this. And he said, "You know, I think you got something here. This is a rules based monetary system." I've been waiting for this for my entire career. So the combination of disruptive innovation generally, economics on top of that, and the huge misunderstanding out there as to what this is, uh, that was that was intriguing and, and launched our research effort. Thank you. Elon, uh, what's influenced your views on Bitcoin? Well, I've th thought about money for quite a while, obviously since the PayPal days. Um, the uh, uh, and then the, the companies that preceded that X.com, which I created, and and uh, Confinity, which uh, Peter Thiel, Max Levchin, uh, Luke Howery, and others created. Um, and we combined the companies and made PayPal. Made PayPal. So I've been thinking about money for a long time. Um, and r really, it's it, it's it's best to think of money as an information system, uh, primarily an information system for labor allocation, um, and. Uh, for practical purposes, it exists in a series of uh, heterogeneous databases, like very different databases in uh, bank mainframes around the world. Uh, it uh, moves quite slowly in reality. It may seem to move fast sometimes, and it does with PayPal, which is real time. But uh, the vast majority of the systems out there are batch processing. So the actual uh, reconciliation may take uh, one to five uh, business days, uh, so sometimes longer. Um, and the, you have the ACH system, which is ancient and still still in operation, which is um, allows transfers uh, effectively like a, a check would be an ACH tra transfer, but it's it's not secure. And you've got the uh, credit card systems, which are also uh, not secure. It would be like handing your username and password to a stranger in a restaurant if, if you buy a meal. So um, there's, there's definitely an opportunity for uh, something that is uh, that is better from an inf information theory standpoint. So, um, and, and and there you can think of it like data data on a network. I think is, is the way to view it. Um, what has the the most throughput? What has uh, the the least error? Uh, lost? What what drops the fewest packets? Uh, fraud, fraud, for example, being a source of error, um, and uh, uh, government interference in currencies being a source of error. Um, but it's it's fundamentally an information system. So. Um, I think it makes sense to support something that uh, improves the, uh, the the quality of information with which we conduct the economy. Um, and you know, Bitcoin is uh, a candidate for that. Uh, it is it does I think some things well, um, and it's obviously it's, it's evolving. And there are additional things like Lightning being done on top of Bitcoin, 
Um, but, but Bitcoin per se is mostly solving for uh, scarcity, um, or, or rather solving for uh, essentially um, having no throat to choke, decentralized. Uh, so there's, there's no one who can be uh, coerced in any way uh, to uh, empty their Bitcoin account. Well, I guess they could technically buy it on an individual basis, but the system as a whole cannot. Um, and um, and it has an open ledger, uh, which is also quite quite good. Um, but transaction volume is is low. Uh, transaction transaction cost is high, uh, and usability for the average person is is not is not yet very good. But it has a lot of potential. Um, and I should say that like I, I'm not. And I apologize for taking a long time, but there's, there certainly is lots to say. Um, in general, I'm a supporter of, of Bitcoin. Um, and uh, the idea of cryptocurrency in general. Um, uh, but as I've said publicly, we, we do need to watch, to watch out for uh, crypto taking, uh, especially Bitcoin, using proof of work to maybe use energy that's maybe a bit too much uh, and, and not necessarily uh, good for the environment. So, um, but on balance, I support Bitcoin, and I, I and I, I'm not an investor. I don't, the only publicly traded stock I own is Tesla, um, and the only significant thing I own outside of Tesla is is, is my SpaceX stock that that, that um, you know could help create both companies. So, um, but out, but apart from that, uh, I do own Bitcoin, uh, and, and Tesla owns, owns Bitcoin, SpaceX owns Bitcoin. Um, and I do personally uh, own a bit of Ethereum and, and Dogecoin, of course. So, okay, great, thank you. And we'll get into some of those issues in, in, in more depth as well. Um, Jack, how about you? What shaped your views of Bitcoin? Um, the the network and the community. I, you know, it's uh, it's deeply principled. It's weird as hell. Uh, it's always evolving, and it just reminded me of the internet when I was a kid. And, you know, I, I encountered alt cypherpunks when I was fairly young, and um, this was a topic of discussion for years. I didn't touch it until 2008 when we started Square. Um, you know, we, Elon and teams at X and PayPal inspired a lot of what we were trying to do, trying to bring in more to a physical world. But we encountered this crazy predatory system um, that was slow, that was obtuse, and I think you know, one of the things that we tried to do, which X and PayPal also tried to do, is build an abstraction layer around this complication and around this predatory nature that the financial industry can tend to be and make it work for people. But when I saw Bitcoin in 2009, you see a chance to replace the whole foundation and everything that Elon was talking about in terms of ACH and um, the credit card networks we're built with very different agendas in a very different time frame, and it's crazy that they still exist and yeah. they have scaled, but they, they they just are not relevant to today. And they're certainly not relevant to the future, especially when you consider the entire world and countries like Nigeria or Ghana or India and its interconnection with countries like the United States and Canada and all over Europe. So what, what really drove my thinking and drives my passion around it is like if the internet gets a chance to get a native currency um what will that be and and to me it's bitcoin because of those principles because of that creation story because of its resilience uh, because of the number of tests it's been but what what inspires me the most is just community driving it it's it just reminds me of the early internet it's it's the only reason that i have a career because i learned so much from people like who are building Bitcoin today. And I continue to learn uh, in that sense. And um, I'm so grateful for it. So that's a good segue into the next question I'd like to ask you, Jack, is you, you said before the Bitcoin changes everything. Can you speak more to that? Well, I just I, I just think that, um, you know, our a lot of what we experience in life, um, when you really get down to the to the foundation, a lot of our monetary policies, a lot of our monetary systems cause so much distraction and so much cost. And when you get to a system where 
you know, the potential for people to truly own it. Um, they can verify it themselves. You don't have to have trust going in. Uh, you don't have to trust it at all. You can verify it uh, through source code or whatever your, um, your appetite is. And that any particular person can help drive uh, the future of it. And at the same time, it's not controlled by any state. It's not controlled by any bank. It's not controlled by any corporation. Um, and these three parties of people who participate in the network, people who mine, and also the developers, constantly debating uh, the correct roadmap and the way forward is a beautiful thing. And I don't know of many other consensus-based models that have existed at that scale for this long with this amount of success. And we're still fairly early. So when, you know, I, I met a woman in Ethiopia uh, two years ago, and she was trying to create the lift for, for Ethiopia. Elon, I think I reached out to you at that time as well because she really wanted some Teslas. Um, she still has to take paper fiat cash from her passengers and pay all of her drivers in the same way because there's no monetary system that she can utilize. There's nothing digital. Um, and Africa as a continent is hugely interconnected from a monetary standpoint, but also hugely taxed in that same way. Um, so a lot of the potential that I, I see, you know, the internet having a, a native currency um, helps her build her business uh, in a much faster way. And also, if you consider something like Bitcoin existing before um, YouTube, before Twitter, before Facebook, a lot of the business models that we have today would not be the same. We would not, we would certainly not have the dependency we have upon the advertising business model if Bitcoin existed pre-Twitter. And I think the amount of um, business models that it enables the amount of innovation it enables going forward, especially when you can consider the whole internet instead of going country by country by country by country, which you have to whenever you're doing with finance, um, it, it really just opens the aperture. And that that is that is what I want to see in my lifetime, is, is a currency that is standard and sound for the internet that everyone can use. Great. Um a hallmark of Bitcoin is its fixed supply of 21 million coins. Um, Elon referenced that earlier. It may be the first system that humans have created that humans cannot later change. Kathy, I'm curious, with your background in monetary history and macroeconomics, what, what are your thoughts on that, that type of system? Oh well, I'll just uh, I'll recount the 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 story uh, about Art Laffer and and our going through the paper, uh, and he said, uh, as I said, first rules based monetary system, global ever. This is a a very big idea. Once we had convinced him of the um, of the ecosystem it, itself. Uh, now, this is uh, the role that it's playing, given that the rule is a quantity rule, that 21 million units, is really a, a store of value uh, role. So there are three roles of money, uh, store of value, very important, uh, 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 the uh, means of exchange, so for transactions, and the unit of account, uh, so uh, every good priced in terms of, uh, of whatever the unit is. Uh, so store of value is um, its primary use right now. Um, the others uh, exist with unit of account, reserve currency of the crypto asset ecosystem. That's being seeded a little bit towards uh, uh, stable coins right now. Uh, but the store of value is a, a, a very big role and means of exchange with apps built on top of uh, the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, we think is going to become more, more of a reality. Right now, high value, uh, high value transactions take place over, over Bitcoin, uh, and, uh, and that is a very useful role. So we look at those, and I remember saying to Art, how big could this be? And he said, well, how big is the US monetary base? Well, today it's $8 trillion, $8 trillion. At the time we were talking, it was $4 trillion. Uh, so we've gone through another crisis since then. Um, 
And so the store of value, this idea that purchasing power will go up over time uh, uh, if demand rises relative to supply, supply ultimately fixed at 21 million units. Um, that's, that's a very good thing, purchasing power going up globally around the world. Uh, and this idea that it's a hedge against uh, confiscation of wealth, uh, and that can take place in, in a myriad uh, of ways, uh, but uh, inflation, and especially hyperinflation in emerging markets is the primary way. Talk about uh, dis destroying purchasing power. Uh, so that's a very big, uh, very big idea. And I'll also mention uh, deflation. In some ways, it's a hedge against deflation. I know some people are confused that um, we uh, at ARC think that we're in a deflationary environment here in the United States. If that is true, the odds of a hyperinflation in the rest of the world, especially in emerging markets, uh, is also true. So, but this deflation. And we learned from 0809, there's counterparty risk associated with deflation. And I think Bitcoin uh, would be a hedge against that uh, uh, eventuality as well. So it's a very big idea. Right. I suspect among us, there's not a lot of debate about Bitcoin's potential as a store of value. But Jack, you referenced earlier um, it being or, or becoming the native currency of the internet. Can you speak more to that and, and also how it relates to maybe how uh, institutions think about it? Um, yeah, I mean, like, um, just, just simple example, if uh, I happen to be in Ghana and my family is in Nigeria, uh, currently I can take anywhere from, uh, and I need to send money back, I, anywhere from uh, 10 to 30% off the top just to send that money back. Whereas um, if you just focus on the worldwide remittance problem, um, Bitcoin solves so many, so many of those problems today instantly. Uh, without having to go through any intermediaries or any slowness or complicated systems that a corporation or, or a state uh, created. So I think, um, you know, having having sound money with that is separate from the state is the idea. Uh, having it completely verifiable by everyone, including the state, including corporations, including individuals, including developers who want to build on top of it is quite powerful. And that's what keeps it secure and strong. And um, I think that's, you know, we, we, need, we need more of that, which is why this, one of, the, one of the reasons why this conversation is so important is as entities come into the space, um, it's not just buying an asset and holding onto an asset and treating it as an investment. There's something special that created this and something precious and something very unique, um, which has to be protected and, and we need to do whatever we can to, to help that thrive as well. Elon, I'm curious your opinion on this. You, you mentioned earlier uh, about Bitcoin's throughput or the, the importance of throughput, um, maybe some concerns around Bitcoin. Uh, can you speak, do you, th do you think Bitcoin can become peer-to-peer -peer cash? Um, well, Bitcoin does have a fundamentally, a fundamental scarcity limit at the base layer um, that's designed in. Um, that doesn't mean you can't have some layer two system theory like Lightning. Um, and I understand Lightning is doing well in, in, in some small countries, um, there's there's some question mark as to whether you need um, a money transmitter license. Um, just a debate as to whether that's needed, um, given that it is not uh, open ledger. Um, so it's there's and that's that's a whole separate debate, of course. Um, but Bitcoin, but Bitcoin by itself simply cannot scale to be the monetary system for the world at base layer. But with a second layer. This is possible depending upon how that that second layer is implemented, um, and uh, yeah, as part of why I think there's, there's there, there may be some merit um, to uh, <laughs> so, something that may seem silly, like like Ethereum, like like Dogecoin. Um, I, I think Ethereum also, might, like I said, might, like the three the three things I, I own outside of SpaceX and Tesla, <laughs> uh, and also obviously it's a Neuralink and Boring Company, but but of any significance are. Um, Bitcoin by far, and then some Ethereum and some Doge. Um, so, you know, if, if if the price of Bitcoin goes down, I I uh, I lose money. I, I'm not sort of, you know, um, you know, I might pump, but I don't dump. <laughs> um, so, uh, 
you know, it, it's not a case of, um, I'm, I, I definitely do not believe in, in, in getting the price high and selling or anything like that. Um, so, uh, and I would like to see Bitcoin succeed. Um, uh, I, I think there's, there's some merit to, cons- this is not a slam on Bitcoin, there's some merit to, to consider considering uh, a, a something that has a higher max transaction rate um, and lower transaction cost um, and kind of seeing how far you could take a single layer network where the uh, exchanges act as a de facto uh, second layer. Um, I think you can probably take that further than people realize. And, and as uh, bandwidth increases over time, uh, latency decreases, uh, I mean, SpaceX and Starlink is actually playing a role in this. Um, and I think long term, people will probably have you know, access to uh, worldwide access to gigabit level uh, connectivity at low latency. And so uh, at, at, at low cost. And so then, you know, your, your, your base layer could do a lot of transactions if you uh, take that into account. Um, so, yeah, but, but like I said, Bitcoin with a layer two system um, certainly could scale to do a vast number of transactions. Uh, same goes for Ethereum. A question about the um, <clears throat> scaling at the layer one. The, the concern from you know the past five years of debate in the Bitcoin community is that that would sacrifice too much uh, decentralization and hurt the censorship resistant properties of Bitcoin. Um, I'm curious, if, if you know, what are your thoughts on that? Are, are you sensitive to that? Do you, and are you concerned about losing some of the special properties of Bitcoin or, or, or another cryptocurrency by scaling at layer one? Yeah, I mean, th- these things are it's helpful to like use the physics tools of thinking and say, you know, scale up, scale down and see if it still makes sense. So if scaling up the transaction block doesn't make sense, why don't you scale it down? And have it be, you know, so that somebody, you know, with a laptop from 2008 can still run a Bitcoin node. Why don't you slow it down? Oh, you want to slow it down? Well, maybe, you have, maybe you're at the wrong number then. <laughs> there's, there's actually people, there's members in the community that do, do want to slow it down. <laughs> but I, but I understand you. It's, it's silly. Um, the, the, the reality is, like, the average person is not going to run um, a Bitcoin node. So... This is this is a and 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 Bitcoin, you know, uh, it was a lot of clever ideas, but uh, you know, th- th- these parameters were set. I don't know what in two thousand eight or something, uh, maybe two thousand nine. Um, and there's like there've been some improvements uh, since then, but but not a lot. So, um, you know, it's sort of like if, if, if the, the there was still in two thousand eight there was still a, a non-trivial number of people on modems, <laughs> so. Um, you know, now now it is it is uh, quite common to get a uh, uh, hundred megabit uh, connection just for a house. Some some houses have gigabit connections. So, um, and that, that trend is obviously in the direction of higher bandwidth and lower latency. Um, and if somebody else doesn't do it, Starlink certainly will. So, I have high confidence that uh, you will be able to maintain a decentralized finance system while still having a much bigger blockchain, a.k.a. Tech, ASCII text, text ledger, um, <laughs> a hash ledger, um, you can make the hash ledger bigger um, without uh, suffering from decentralization as uh, the average connectivity improves, obviously. One idea would be to run of, or to put a Bitcoin full node in, in Starlink ter- terminals. That way more people would be, be running it. I uh, actually, <laughs> I have run this by the team at one point. Um, I had this idea, which is kind of off the wall, but uh, like, let's say you need a, a, a little space heater. Um, and normally your space heater would uh, just be pure entropy. Um, but what if that space heater was also a, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge mining node? Uh, pick, pick your currency. Um, and so then you'd be heated up and... Uh, you would also mind, uh, uh, you know, your your crypto, uh, and have connectivity in one. I love that idea. Yeah, I mean, better than running a space heater. Absolutely. Are, are there any other um, 
you know, so you're, you're drawn to, to Dogecoin a little bit. Are there any other gaps in Bitcoin that you see that cause you to, to be drawn to, towards Dogecoin? Oh, I think, um, <laughs> um, I mean, I think there's, there's, um, there's, Doge has, uh, the Doge community, I think, has, uh, is somewhat irreverent, obviously, and uh, is, uh, has great memes. And loves dogs, and I, I love dogs and memes. And um, uh, it, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, and um, you know, I think the you know there's there's there's, uh, there's Occam's razor, which is the 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 the, the simplest answer is the most likely. Uh, it's a summary of Occam's razor. The simplest answer is the most likely one. Then there's a friend of mine came up with a variant on that, that the most ironic outcome is the most likely one. Um, and then I have a variant on that, which is the most entertaining outcome is the most likely one. So if that is true, then the most ironic and entertaining outcome would be that the, the cryptocurrency that was started as a joke <laughs> to make fun of cryptocurrencies ends up being the, lead, the leading cryptocurrency. <laughs> that would be the most ironic outcome. Jack, what, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> um, is, is Bitcoin resilient enough to uh, overcome that? I think it's resilient, but also I think like it, you you find I mean that's what attracts me to the to Bitcoin in the first place is the irreverence. Um, a lot of that uh, a lot of that uh, a lot of that just brings it forward and 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 you know at first go it, it it makes it a little bit inaccessible but as people get into it it makes it more accessible and more spreadable and um i i think i i absolutely think the resilience is there um i i think it's important to have fun as well and anyway anyway folks can express themselves i think that goes back to the main idea of like how do we how do we create a, a native currency for the internet any anything that goes towards that path like that's whatever whatever wackiness or fun we can have along the way that's going to make it a lot more enjoyable and it's going to make a lot more people want to use it i'd also point out there's nothing stopping someone from creating a bitcoin wallet that has that's like fun and has memes has dogs that's possible as well uh -huh. <laughs> um great let's move on, to the... on right now at this point <laughs> um let's move on to the next topic which is bitcoin and energy it's a really hot topic um that lots of people are talking about um Let's start with uh, Elon. You've been vocal on this. You've uh, you've said that. I mean, you said many things about it. Um, you've also said that uh, Tesla will resume payments in Bitcoin payments if the renewable energy is approximately fifty percent and and sort of looks like it's on a positive future yeah. trend. Um, what do you think the state of things are with respect to that? Yeah. So I I do think that um, it, 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 there appears to be a positive trend. Um, in the energy usage of Bitcoin. Uh, actually, part of this is due to the drop in Bitcoin price. Um, so um, I mean, what, what I observed or what I thought I was seeing, um, there may be some disagreements on this, but uh, from when uh, Tesla announced that it had acquired Bitcoin and was doing Bitcoin transactions, there, there was a massive run up in the Bitcoin price um, and also a massive increase in the amount of energy used to mine Bitcoin. Um, and I think the, you know, I, I I understand renewable energy quite a bit. I mean, te te Tesla does solar and is uh, interacts with uh, a lot of uh, wind generation uh, through our mega pack because you know basically need to store energy from wind and from solar. So we're pl pretty plugged into the renewable in energy industry, um, and there's there's just no way that you could basically double or triple the amount of energy in such a short period of time with renewables. Um, but you could shovel coal that fast. And so I was like, look, this is this is too sketchy. Tesla's mission is accelerating uh, the advent of sustainable energy. Um, we, we can't be the company that does that and also um, not do appropriate diligence on the energy usage of Bitcoin. So um, so all I did was I said, look, we're, we're going to suspend Bitcoin transactions for now. We're not selling any Bitcoin, nor am I selling anything personally, or nor is SpaceX selling any Bitcoin. Um, Again, I want to emphasize uh, SpaceX, Tesla, and and I own Bitcoin. Uh, uh, I, I also own a little bit of Ethereum and Doge, but the companies just own Bitcoin, um, and the Bitcoin that I own is worth uh, much more than the Ethereum or Doge. So uh, clearly, if I'm uh, 
you know, if the, the, these actions negatively affect me financially, if I was purely financially motivated, then uh, I would I would not uh, express this reticence about uh, Bitcoin energy usage. Um, now, the it, it looks like Bitcoin is shifting a lot more towards renewables, um, and a bunch of the um, heavy-duty coal plants that were being used, unequivocally being used, this is not a question mark, um, have been shut down, especially in, in China. So uh, I think it's probably, uh, I, I want to do a little bit more diligence um, to confirm uh, that the could, could confirm that the percentage of renewable energy usage is most likely uh, or, uh, sort of at or above fifty percent, um, and that there is that that, that there is a trend towards imp- increasing that number, um, and if so, then Tesla will resume Bitcoin uh, accepting Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, so. I think we want to just do a little bit more diligence, and and I think, but most likely the answer is that Tesla would would resume accepting Bitcoin. Most most likely. That's Steve, good to hear. I would Steve, agree with that, Kathy. Yeah, may I ask a question, um, Elon? I'm not quite sure if you saw the paper uh, that Square and Arc did together on um, making uh, Bitcoin mining a part of a utility, uh, you know, a broad based utility ecosystem, whereby. You know, the overage from sunshine or wind uh, uh, powers the Bitcoin mining machine, thereby uh, enabling uh, the proliferation of renewables uh, to a much faster extent or at a faster rate than otherwise would be the case. What do you think of that? Well, the problem is that um, in order to operate um, so-called mining or hashing rigs, uh, in order to operate a bunch of hashing rigs, uh, you if, effectively you have to run them 24/7, um, which means you need base load. Uh, you can do that with uh, solar and wind plus battery, but if you only did it based on solar wind overage, uh, your um, your your hashing regularization would be much less. So you'd be at a disadvantage. Sure, uh, it'd be a disadvantage. Hydro or geothermal, hydro or geothermal are great for mm-hmm. as renewable means. I'm also uh, pro pro nuclear. Uh, I think modern nuclear power plants are safe, uh, contrary to what people may think. Um, so, um, I really think we, you know, we, um, it's possible to make in very, very extremely safe <laughs> nuclear. I'm talking about fission. You don't need fusion. <laughs> um, and then, of course, fusion. You just got that big fusion reactor in the sky called the sun. It comes up every, you know, every day. Um, so. Uh, but I think a combination of solar and wind plus uh, stationary storage uh, will get you that uh, uh, base load so you can run uh, uh, hashing 24-7. I'm, Jack, I'm curious. You, you've stated that Bitcoin incentivizes renewable energy. Uh, that's what we're talking about now. Do you have any additional thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, every everything that uh, that Elon said and Kathy, Kathy mentioned, but... Um, it, it's also incentivizing a lot of innovation in, in just energy space and just like looking at unused energy. Um, there's a there's a company called uh, Great American Mining that um, caps the methane flares on oil oil fields to power their their rigs. And you just imagine and, and you mentioned nuclear Elon as well. And just imagine all the unused energy that is just being wasted every single day, um, and being able to get that energy and convert it converting it into a secure, sound money system for the planet um, feels like a worthy trade-off. And, and that's the sort of incentive that I think is, is most powerful is like, how do we reuse what is being currently just dumped on the ground and wasted and, and not considered? And how do we do that at scale? Um, and I think that's a, that's a bigger conversation that I think is, is missing. Um, but I agree with, with everything that, that Elon has said and also um, you know the paper we put forth. I I'm curious if any of you have thoughts on how the industry could, what the industry can do to accelerate this the transition to renewable energy. And like Elon specifically, could Tesla Energy or Starlink play a role? Well, um, I think Tesla can play a role. Or t- I mean, Tesla's. Um, uh, literal like reason for existence. Um, I mean, the reason I've I've 
I put so much of my life energy into Tesla, which is a lot. Um, in fact, it's, I would say that I've had some, some, some pretty tough life experiences and Tesla is responsible for probably two thirds of all, all personal and professional pain combined, just to give you a sense of perspective there. Um, so this is a hella hard situation. Um, but we, we, we do solar, uh, commercial solar, um, solar retrofit as well as the solar, um, roof. Um, and we make, uh, consumer, um, battery packs called Powerwall for houses and small businesses. And then the utility scale, uh, which, which are gigantic. These we, we've done now, uh, a number of, of gigawatt hour installations. Like it, it, that's a lot, that's a lot. <laughs> um, and, and a lot of them actually have been for load leveling the grid. But mostly they are, um, and, and combined with like big, so like the one, the first really big one we did, which is, um, a hundred megawatt installation in, um, in Australia, uh, uh, that's actually helped stabilize a huge portion of the South Australian grid um, because it's able to react so fast. Um, in fact, at first, um, <laughs> they, they've, they've got the, a billing system in, in Australia that I think works at the sort of millisecond level, and we were operating at the microsecond level. <laughs> so it was, it was the system was operating so fast that, that the measuring system couldn't see it. But um, so, so Tesla certainly doing doing a lot to. Um, uh, enable renewables, uh, especially wind and solar. Um, uh, and in fact, the limiting factor for us right now is cell production. So we, we need to um, both internally uh, get our, the Tesla internal, internal battery cells produced as well as uh, increase supply from suppliers. Um, and generally when I talk to our suppliers and they say, what, what, how many cells would you like us? So how many cells can you make? Um, you know, because sometimes they're like, concerned like was Tesla going to compete with them on sales I'm like no no if you want to make the sales be our guest it's just that we, we need a crazy number of, of batteries um, and they need to be done it obviously needs to be mined and produced and um, manufactured um, in an ethical and environmentally sound way so um, you know at Tesla we, we really do aspire to be the good guys like you know to be, to be a company that, that people can, can believe